Hey, welcome back everyone. We've got a very big topic here. By big, I don't mean long, difficult, challenging, but more so central, hugely important, crucial to all of JavaScript. That topic is functions. Functions, in some people's minds at least, are the one topic that you must understand to be a good JavaScript developer. They are central to the language. I know I've really overused that phrase in this course because all the things we've covered so far are important. We use them in pretty much every application or script we ever write. We're definitely going to use variables and data structures, arrays and objects. We'll have logic with conditionals. We'll use loops. We'll use functions. But more than that, functions are very important to the way JavaScript is structured. They're crucial to JavaScript's identity as a language. And you'll see what I mean as we progress through the rest of the course. It's not only about defining our own functions and learning the syntax, but also there are a lot of quirks with functions, a lot of things we can do that are cool with functions that just take some time to understand. So it's a big topic because it's important, because it's something we use every single time we write code, basically from here on out. So we're not gonna understand and cover every single topic around functions in this one section. We have a couple main goals for this section. We wanna understand the basics. What is a function? Why do you use them? And then mostly, how do we define them? What's the syntax? And then we'll write a ton of example functions. We'll have some exercises, some code alongs. We just need to get practice. So functions are not difficult, at least writing your own functions. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of things to understand about functions, different variations, different capabilities or features, and that will all unfold across a couple sections. So it's not all concentrated right here. Okay, so let's begin. What the heck is a function? A function is simply a reusable procedure. It's a chunk of code that we've wrapped up in a function. So it's a bunch of lines of code that we can call again at any point. We can refer back to it. So we could have a function called get latest Reddit posts. And anytime we called it, it would have code inside of it that would presumably request new Reddit posts and send them back to us. Or we could have a simpler one, find average in array, or just find average. Or we could have a function called square, and it simply squares a value. Every time we pass in a number, like 10, it should return the square, 100. So we make these chunks of code, they're little machines, which is why I'm using this sort of imagery here, mechanical stuff. It's, it's a bunch of code that we put together and we wrap it up into a package. And the advantage of doing this is that we can then call that chunk of code. We can call that function later on which is kind of what this visual is supposed to represent. I had a really hard time coming up with a graphic for functions. This represents the function, the machinery. And then this button right here is calling that function. Every time we press it, the function does its thing. It does its action. So there's a two-step process for every function that we ever use, that we write. First, we define the function. We lay it out. We tell JavaScript, here is how this thing should work. It's kind of like registering it. Or going to the, I don't know, the DMV, filling out forms saying, here's this new function. But that doesn't do anything as far as running the code. It's just defining it, telling JavaScript about the function. Then the second step is to execute the function to run it. And we can run it once. We could run it 100 times. It's totally up to you and when you need to use it. But the point here is that it's a two-step process. You write it, and then you run it. We've been working with quite a few functions so far. We've been calling them methods which is important. It is a distinction in terminology. It's one we will address later once we learn how to write our own methods. But methods are functions. They are actions. They're chunks of code that have been wrapped up, given a name, and made into a repeatable function. So things like hello dot to uppercase. To uppercase is a built-in method, which again, we'll just call a function for now. It's a built-in function. Every time I call it, I need to use parentheses, it's referring back to the same definition, the same built-in set of instructions that says, here is how to uppercase works. So we're skipping the first step because it's a built-in function or method. We're simply running that code. It's already been defined or written for us. But notice we use parentheses. We've seen that before. It's the exact same thing when we're running our own functions. So we've been using functions, but we haven't been defining them. How do we define our own? There are quite a few different syntaxes, and syntax I, different ways of writing functions in JavaScript. The one we'll focus on for now at least is called a function declaration or a function statement. It looks like this. 
the function keyword, a space, and then a name for the function, which is totally up to you, as long as it's a valid name. So you don't want to name your function const. You don't want to name your function function or for or if, but in general, name it whatever you want. Just don't put spaces in there. It has to be a valid identifier. Shouldn't start with a number. And then parentheses, open and closing parentheses. Sometimes we put stuff in there, which we'll get to shortly, and then curly braces. And we write our code in here. Whatever code we put in here, in the body of the function, will be called when this function runs. So here's a simple, trivial, obnoxious example. I'm defining a function called grumpus. It doesn't mean anything at all. It's just printing out three grouchy console.logs. Ugh, you again, for the last time, leave me alone. And every time we call grumpus, these three lines would be printed out. So it doesn't seem useful because this is not useful. Why would you ever need this? Why would you need a function called grumpus? We'll get to useful ones. But the pattern is very important. Function is a keyword, space, and then our function name with parentheses, curly braces, we put some content inside. So let's define it over here, function grumpus, parentheses, and then console.log three things. There we go, I just copied it over. We have three console.logs. I'm gonna save this file and refresh the page. Nothing happens. All that we've done is tell JavaScript, here is a function called grumpus, but it's never running. We're just registering it. We're letting JavaScript know, here's a thing called grumpus. So to run it, which is the second step, all we do is write the name of the function followed by parentheses. Just like we've done with string methods like to uppercase, we add those parens. If we leave them off, you might remember, we talked about this briefly in one of the videos, it's almost like JavaScript is telling us, oh yeah, yeah, I know what that thing is. That was registered with me. It's showing us there's some code, in this case, native code, built-in code, but it's not actually running it. We have to add those parens. So same thing for Grumpus. If I simply type Grumpus and I don't add those parens, I'm seeing from JavaScript that this is a function, it's been registered, it exists, but I'm not running it. I'm just referencing it. So I need those parens, and there we go. My three lines actually run. The function is executed. So Grumpus, let's do it three times. Grumpus, Grumpus. We'll save, I'm gonna refresh the page, and now we get nine console.logs. We've defined our function and we've executed it. Two steps. And we can execute it like this. We could execute it in a loop. If I wanted to loop 20 times, for let i equal zero, i less than or equal, well, let's do less than, let's do 50, i plus plus, we've got a whole flock of grumpuses. I can call grumpus, refresh the page, and we get a whole lot of grumpus, <laughs> grumpus text printed out. A very stupid and grumpy function, but the point is not the content, it is the format function keyword, space, some function name, whatever this name is, you must reference later. So if I tried to call Grumpus with a capital G, that doesn't exist, I get an error. It has to match the name we gave it up here, and then parens in order to execute it. All right, so this is just the beginning. We'll very quickly see some more useful functions. We've got a lot more to talk about.